Hey, how's everybody doing? And welcome back to the next edition of Coffee Talk with Brohawk. And today I have I have my good friend Bill Combs um, uh, as my guest today. And we're going to be talking a little bit of social media today with Bill. Hey, Bill, can you tell um, can you tell uh, viewers a little bit about yourself and the work that you do with uh, with your company, No Time for Social? Absolutely, yeah. So um, my background is fairly diverse. Uh, grew up on Long Island. Uh, entered the Air Force in 1992 uh, as a meteorologist. Uh, headed over to Kansas, where you and I met up, and yes. it's a you know match made in heaven there, right? So uh, <laughs> left Kansas in '95 and uh, started a, a weather a private weather forecasting company uh, called Anything Weather, and we had a we had a product called Hail Watch that really just, you know, did really, really well in the market. So yeah. um, I, I ran that through 2011. However, there was a little bit of a gap in between. So I drew my fishing line out to Kansas and wheeled Brody down to, to, to Austin. So uh, yes. we worked together in call centers in various instances, and that was just phenomenal times there. Uh, and in 2011, uh, I, I got a little burnt out with weather. Uh, the thing about weather is it never stops, right? So literally my entire life was consumed by weather, hail, storms, tornadoes, hurricanes. It was insanity. So I had my son in 2010, late 2011, I had an opportunity to go back to TG where you and I worked together. Um, I, I got I got pulled out of that really quick because somebody wanted me to start a nonprofit with them. So uh, because I'm all over the place all the time, I was like, all right, I need to do that now. But I had that entrepreneurial spirit in me still, right? The bug is still sitting in my gut. Uh, so nonprofit was great, but I needed something else. I had a bunch of my yeah. roofing clients that were reaching out to me and they were like, hey, Bill, uh, we really want you to run our Facebook accounts because we have we have no time for social. So like one thing led to another, it clicks, it's two in the morning, no time for social on GoDaddy, let's register that puppy. And between 2011 and 2013, I started the wheels in motion to get no time for social going. Really kicked it off January of 2014 as an official S Corp. And between 20 and 14 now, we've been just running Facebook ads, content, digital, um, we've really focused on the social side of things. So I often get questions like, you know, do you guys do Google ads? Do you build websites? Nope. Focus, right? So we're staying focused with Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, blogging. So we'll do some writing, content writing, but everything is really focused around the digital side of things, social side of things, and then executing really, really good ad plans. So that's really how I got to where I'm at today. And uh, it's been a great journey, you know, no regrets. Loved working with you over the years. And, you know, obviously we live a block away from each other and still stay in touch all the time. So love it. You know, you know, Bill, I, I had uh, Kelly Edmonds on uh, yeah, a few I weeks back, that. you know, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's amazing. I mean, you and I have known each other for 30 plus years. Um, yeah. And, you know, the... Um, the the connections over the 30 year period that we've known each other and and you know you and I have both know Kelly as well and you know it, it's amazing how how um how great a career you know uh someone like yourself or or Kelly or any of the, any of the other folks that I've had on um you know have had over over the years um knowing where we all started you know? yeah it's um, amazing i mean the networking side of life to me is probably one of the most important things. You can ask my you can ask my 12 year old to finish this sentence. If I say to him, hey, Billy, your network is he'll look at me and say your network. So I'm already nice. driving that into his head. Right. Like nice. get that network going. And he's already off the rails when it comes to the networking. He knows too many people. So. Um, it's good times. And again, you know, being able to develop those relationships over the years and obviously people come and go, but you get this core group that you're able to connect with and stay in touch with, and you never know where the next connection is going to come, where that next individual is going to be referred to or from. So my neighbor just referred me to an outsourced uh, CEO that she works with 
at her company. Uh, she has a chip company. She works for a chip company in Georgetown. And boom, right away, I got a connection with that guy. We got on a call. He's been here the same amount of time you and I have been here. And yep. now all of a sudden we're going to meet up. We're going to talk about how I could support his company all out of just, hey, you guys need to meet. So it's, it's super important. That's awesome. You know, I, I, um, I talk about you often as, uh, as, as the guy that got me down to Texas, not once, but twice. <laughs> um, you know, you, you, you call me up and you say, hey, I, I got an opportunity for you. You know, I'm like, well, you know, uh, I don't know about this. No, no, seriously, you need to talk to this person or that person. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, bada bing, bada boom. Uh, next thing you know, I'm in I'm I'm in Texas, and uh, you know, kind of like you. I mean, we've been here we've been here a number of years, and uh, you know, the Austin area is just is just chock full of of, of network, and um, I mean, it, it it's home. You know, regardless yeah. of where we started. So yeah. Oh no, I I fully know. agree. And and granted, yeah. you know, there are you know every once in a while I miss New York because I got family and friends back there. But honestly, this is this is it. And, uh, you know, we, we've built a home here. We've built a life here. And honestly, if you're going to be anywhere at this point to even like weather any kind of like minute or even minor or major economic downturn, and hopefully it's not major uh, that we mm -hmm. see coming up, this is really the place to be. Um, I remember the major economic downturn we had when the dot-com boom uh, uh, hit. And you and I were actually working at Comco together. I don't know if you remember this, but Intel was building a building in, in like downtown Austin at the time. And when that hit mm -hmm. Intel, like they scrapped those plans. They actually ended up demoing that building. So I'm still a little bit, I got some butterflies in my stomach, right? My wife and I brought Alexander to uh, A&M this past Monday and driving out there, Ileana counted 20 cranes doing the Samsung plant. And, you know, Samsung said they want to build nine more plants out there. You know, we all hope that's going to happen, but you never know what's going to come up next. So, um, again, just a, a little nervous anticipation of getting us through the next, you know, two to four years to see if we can come out of this post-COVID, all kinds of insanity stuff. So, um, you know, we're, we're in the right place. And... Uh, I saw an article the other day that, or, or a video or somebody mentioned, and you know, who knows, it was just sort of off the cuff, but the, the Texas triangle, which is basically DFW all the way down to San Antonio over to Houston, they anticipate having 50 million people in that triangle over the next like 40 or 50 years. So yes. it's, it's really, really amazing. And, and really Austin and San Antonio now is almost one city in a way. I mean, I know it's, it's still a distance, but you drive down and you can't tell where, you know, Buda ends, Kyle begins, New Bernal starts, San Marcos. Uh, we yes. go down there for basketball now. So um, it's, it's really a great place to be. And, and I feel blessed that I'm still here and I uh, didn't make any, you know, off the cuff, you know, rash decisions. I tend to make less of those now than I did 20 years ago. <laughs> hey, we, we call it, we're, we're a little bit more experienced. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> wisdom wisdom you know in and just talking about like all the growth in like the austin metro area that we've seen over the last you know 25 30 years um you know the the need for for having that social presence for a lot of these uh, a lot of uh companies is is so so important you know you, you shared a little bit about why or, you know what the the impetus for no time for social you know mm -hmm. your, your, your roof and clients were like Hey, I don't have any time for social. Oh, no time yep. for social. Okay, sounds good. But why has why has social media and social media marketing been become such a passion for you? I, you know, in back in 2008, when I first started running ads for Hail Watch, and, and we started getting some lift off of that, like the light went on for me. Um, mm -hmm. And in 2009, 2010, I saw an ink. I think it was an Inc. 5000 keynote speech by a guy named Gary Vaynerchuk. And he now runs a full on probably thousand person digital agency out of New York and does a lot of really high end stuff. So that his speech, that 50 minute speech I watched really inspired me to say, OK, this guy sort of has an idea of what is happening going forward. And a lot of the stuff that he's talked about has come true. So. I followed some of his sort of inspiration, but also 
just saw when I started implementing some of these social strategies and they started working and then knowing I was spending time, more time on Facebook, they, they really started cranking up the mobile app, knowing that TV stations were struggling because as soon as a commercial comes on on a football game, you're now going to, going to you know, Facebook. And even five, six years ago, I was saying, why don't the TV, st- why don't the sports teams split the screen and have the commercial on the right and the fo- and the timeout on the left? And now they're doing that, right? Yes. They want their eyes on the TV and they know if they just go right to the commercial, people are going to go to TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and they're going to jack around until the sports come back on. So they're, they're even sort of opening up their eyes to that now. So when I, when I sort of had that, that, vision come into my head through various means of like pushing me. I was like, this is something we need to do. So what's really interesting about when we started the company is we, we were focus, focused on roofing, but our second client, which has now been with us for over 100 months, 100 months, they've been a client of ours. And we've been doing all That's their awesome. social media and ads is Fort Bragg Federal Credit Union. That's so great. Even organizations like credit unions, even organizations that are, you know, non-traditional to like, we need to focus on social where they're very traditional in their media, saw the light. And I think a lot of them are seeing the light now. The biggest challenge, the number one challenge they're having is one, getting somebody experienced enough to create content. And then two, the paid side of things, which we can get into. It's, it's a mm-hmm. huge, huge challenge, the paid side of things. I would say the third thing that a lot of companies don't recognize is they try to lump marketing into one job description. It's really, really tough to get somebody that's an expert in video, video creation, video editing, images, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, creating ads, running ad funnels, running ad funnels that go into your CRM, you're literally looking for like some kind of fairy tale employee. And I can't tell you the number of times I look at job descriptions and it's like, you could tell they just cut and paste out of some other job description and said, yep. here's yep. everything we want to do. And by the way, your pay is 15 bucks an hour. Oh, and it's mm-hmm. part-time right now because we need yeah. all this expertise, but we can't afford to pay somebody full-time. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of disasters happening in social and digital and most companies that try to take on the Facebook ads component themselves, you, unfortunately, they usually fail and fail pretty miserably. So that's where a company yeah. like us can come in and, and really provide that resource to, to make it happen and make it happen right. And, you know, j- just chatting over the last few minutes with you, I mean, um, you can tell you have passion to do things right for your clients. Um, Absolutely. And, you know, it, it, it's not just the, it's not just the business aspect, but it's the it's the pride in 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 solving a problem. It mm-hmm. sounds like for um, for your your clients and and their customers. Yeah, um, you know, networking. Um, you know, we were talking a little bit about networking already. I mean, networking isn't just about you know the B two B connections, but it's also in making that those those connections into you know a potential customer base because you don't yep. know. Uh, you m- remember when. Um, um, you know, when we were growing up, there was that commercial, um, you know, I think it was a, a shampoo commercial or something like mm-hmm. that, you know, and, and, oh, don't tell so-and-so about this. And cause they'll tell two friends and they'll tell two friends and, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, that, that, that was, that was social media at that, you know, back, you know, 40 years ago, right. <laughs> uh, but now it, it, it goes, it goes so quickly. Um, and I, I love seeing your passion. My, my point is I love seeing your passion about this. Um, because I, I know that passion translates well to the work that you, that you're doing for your clients as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, you been, know, it's been great and we, we really love our clients and everything we do for them. So it is something that, you know, I live and breathe every day. You know, one, one of the things that, that, um, that I, I hear, uh, in the contact center world, um, mm-hmm. you know, people want to be on, uh, on, you know, voice, email, chat. Um, you know, if, if they can figure out how to do carrier pigeons, they would, um, yep. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. Um, but the world of social media, um, you know, is, is very similar and, and, you know, 
why is paying attention to the, to the social media presence important? And you know, second secondarily, are all social media platforms just like all contact center channels um, appropriate for all businesses? Yeah. Well, the thing about being on social is it's it's a living, breathing thing, right? So if you think of like um, a company, like let's say TG, where we used to work, right? Yeah. You have a website, you may have a little chat portal and you have a contact us form and you have an email address, right? Mm -hmm. Those are like the traditional way and you can pick up the phone and call, right? Yeah. So you've got these contact center type setups where um, you know, all the tools are there for somebody to reach out to you, but it's not social. So when, when social came to the scene, now all of a sudden companies like Facebook and companies like, or Instagram, which is owned by Facebook, LinkedIn, all these other channels now began offering up and you could turn it on and off, but most companies keep them on various additional channels because they want their users to stay on their platform. Right. Mm -hmm. So if somebody has a problem with, you know, Fort Bragg Federal Credit Union, and they need to reach out to them. They will message them through Facebook sometimes before they'll try to find an email, before they may try to find a phone, call, uh, you know, a phone call, a phone number to call. So I think the importance there is a couple things. One, if if you're going to be on the platforms. It, it, it does need to have somebody that owns it, right? You've got to have an ownership person that says, okay, I'm going to own the piece of, at least when I say own, has responsibility for it, right? Who's producing the content that goes out? Who's quality controlling it? Who's monitoring the messaging platforms? Messenger on Facebook now is really, really more prevalent than it's ever been. <clears throat> and Facebook has changed up the way that those inbox, they, they call it an inbox now, right? And you're having communication with customers back and forth. So obviously there's some security issues there, especially with companies like Fort Bragg. We're not putting any, you know, uh, personal information in those things. And sometimes we do have to have them call. But, you know, those types of things, you have to have ownership. The reason that all companies want to be on social and should be on social with a, with a heavy presence is that's where people are spending their time. So if you know that people are spending time on Facebook, an average of an hour or hour plus per day, if you know they're scrolling on Instagram, if you know that once a week they're going on LinkedIn, um, if you're heavy into job opportunities, you're going to want to be heavy on LinkedIn. You know, you have to be, in my opinion, where the customers are going. And I think that is a piece that sometimes companies will ignore, right? They, 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 they do the set it and forget it. It's not a website. It's, it's, if you're not posting, um, especially if you're a small company, right? If you're not posting and you haven't posted in a year and somebody hits your Facebook page and they're like, oh, the last time they posted was July of 2020, 2021, they must be out of business. I mean, yeah, they may mm -hmm. take, the, take it a next step, but um, it's, it's sort of critical to keep the, keep the wheels in motion. And uh, if, you, if you don't do that, I think there's a risk of you missing out on customers when you don't necessarily know it. Yeah, and, and I think the most important thing that, that, um, that you just mentioned is uh, regardless of what platform you're on, you have to have somebody that owns, that owns it, okay? Yep. And um, you know, going back to something you said earlier, um, you know, it, it you know, you, you try and create the people are trying to create these these position descriptions that are like all all encompassing, you know, for mm. for everything. And, and, you know, certain platforms are a little bit more specialized, uh, yeah. you know, is, is kind of what I'm seeing. And, and it's almost yeah. like you, you want a specialist for for each platform, um, depending on on the volume that you expect to come through your social channels. Would you agree True. with that? Yeah. And it, and it also, obviously, it's going to depend on budget, right? So a company yeah. that is, you know, a company that's small, they may, they may just need to push out, you know, a couple posts a week and monitor their inbound and they, and they may not be running any ads, right? So mm -hmm. if, if you have a company that's small enough, you probably could maybe use some outsourcing techniques to get some content created. We actually even do that at our company. Um, you could use some other techniques. 
Uh, I think the real, I would say the number one piece that most companies are going to struggle with and will struggle with is the ad side of things. So if you plan on, if you're a company that is in the position and you're sitting around the boardroom and you're like, okay, we know that we need to be pushing ads out on Facebook and on LinkedIn and our budget is 10 grand a month and that's part of your business model, you better have an expert in place that knows how to execute on those. And based on my running this company for eight and a half years, I can tell you that I won't say they're few and far between, but the the experts are already working for really good companies probably and sort of are locked down. So trying to get somebody into your company that would be out of college or has like a year of content creation and you're like, okay, come in and run our $5,000 a month ad budget. There is an incredible, incredible amount of learning that needs to be done. And it's almost, I hate to say it, but it's almost trial by error learning in a way. Um, you do not know how that ad platform is going to react with your customers until you start running ads. And that is a big issue with companies that want to run ads, but they need an immediate ROI. Mm-hmm. So if you need that immediate ROI, it, you're, you're going to be, you're going to be sort of spinning your wheels where you're like, okay, I'm going to spend a thousand bucks. I don't know how to run ads. So I'm just going to use Facebook sort of walk me through method to launch that two grand, but then we get nothing happened, but the ad copy is terrible. The call to action is terrible. The image or the video is terrible. They're not running any retargeting. There's like, there's a whole system, right? It's, it's like the core of the earth and you're just standing on the top of earth and you dig down about, you know, 10 inches and you're like, oh, I still got rock. Well, underneath all that rock is the Facebook ads platform and it's massive. And it's hard. <laughs> and, you, you know, it, and, and you and I both know this about each other, but, you know, you know, math sucks, you know, <laughs> you know, but, you know, it's an algebra, you know, social media content creation, um, you know, just like when we were in the, in the collections world, um, mm-hmm. what you push out, you're going to get back. Yeah. And if you're not prepared for what you're going to get back, yeah. Um, then it doesn't matter how good a social, uh, a social presence you have or a content you're, you're pushing out to people. If you're not prepared to get those phone calls, get those responses, yeah. get those emails, text messages, um, you know, regardless of, of the channel, um, yeah. then you're doing some really, you, you have the potential of doing some real, really bad, um, um, you know, brand damage to yourself yeah it may hurt you more than it helps and and that's exactly. that's obviously something to, to take seriously because um you know because social is sort of a living breathing thing sometimes people are posting off the cuff and yeah. off the cuff could mean so and so is logged into the wrong instagram account and instead of they're logged into their personal account they're logged into the business account how many times have we seen that right uh-huh. so you really, really need to be careful. And sometimes you do have to do some damage control. Uh, so I think if, if a company is, is positioning themselves to do more on social, they need a plan. You got to have a plan of action. You got to have the right team in place. It's not something to be taken lightly. And I think because the consumer side of social is, is sort of taken lightly in a way, right? Like when I pop on Facebook and I'm just scrolling, I'm not thinking about how technical it is to run and build that platform and how the ad that just came through my feed got there and why it got there, right? So if you're, if you're going to do it and you're going to put the time into it, you really, really need to be committed to, to doing it right. And if you don't do it right, you, you might as well just sort of sit on the sidelines and you know, have your social channels, do a post every once in a while that may be, you know, uh, a feel good post about your company. But if you're going to use it as a tool and, and obviously put some money behind it, be prepared. And, and that's, that's important. Uh, I, I, I love it. So, and you kind of alluded to, to this, to this next question that, that I have, you know, uh, you know, for a company wondering about, you know, they're about creating more of a social media presence or just, deciding, okay, I need to get on social media, even though I personally don't like it. 
Um, yep. but I need to get on social media. What, what are your top three considerations that, that, that you tell, um, you know, your clients or, or people that you're just talking, talking with? Sure. So for, for me, it would be one is what platforms are you going to be focusing on? Um, I think it's hard to focus, uh, put a lot of, uh, especially paid media behind all of them at once. So I would say focus on picking out one that you want to focus on. And, and I would almost take Facebook and Instagram and lump that together. Um, we're not doing much on TikTok yet, but TikTok could be a consideration for the right brand. And we've seen some that have done really well. Uh, LinkedIn, obviously, if you're heavy B2B, so that would be one thing is what platforms do I need to be on? The second consideration is what content, what content plan are we going to put together? How often are we going to post, right? Mm -hmm. How far in the future can we build and create this content? And so what does that organic content look like that we're going to push out? The third piece is what of that organic content or even separate to the organic content? What kind of paid media, if we're going to run any paid media, are we going to focus on? At that point, you need to do really look at two different things. And, and we, we're a digital marketer certified partner. They're a company based out of Austin here that does a massive amount of training. So we're constantly training in there. They have two tools that we use. One of them is called the customer avatar. It's just basically who is my customer, right? So you're writing down a bunch of different stuff about your customer. This way you can sort of take that information and put it into a targeting campaign on Facebook. Uh, the second one is called the customer value journey. And that's sort of a, a roadmap to Mark doesn't know anything about your company. And all of a sudden Mark gets an ad on Facebook and it's a video ad. He's now in this awareness campaign of, I didn't know that that existed and now I do. How do you go from awareness to attention, to sale, to more sales, to raving fan, mm -hmm. to giving reviews? So that customer value journey really is almost what every business should be thinking about. How do I get my customer from not knowing who I am to becoming a raving fan? So I think if you focus on those three things, uh, initially, it's going to help you sort of set that baseline. Um, yes. I would add one fourth one in there and it would be the people side of it. Who is going to own it, right? So you have to have that ownership piece and then that owner needs to either hire out to make it happen, whether it's a VP of marketing. And we work with a lot of VPs of marketing that outsource to us because they have no time for social. They don't want to learn the ads okay. platform. So if it's a VP of marketing and they're hiring somebody for Facebook ads, you're probably going to have to hire somebody with at least two to three years experience. Don't get somebody out of college and say, go run our Facebook ads. Um, and then, and then what other platforms are you on that is going to need that attention? So those would be three plus one. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, you know, I, I, Hey, I love getting bon uh, bonus content from you. So that, <laughs> I mean, it, it's always a plus. Um, so, you know, one of the things that, that I'm also hearing, you know, in, in that, that last bit that you uh, that that you uh, just went over is, you know, you're you're working with with VPs of marketing, um, and you're working with folks that are all, that already understand, um, you know, marketing strategies and mm -hmm. lead gen strategies, um, but working with a company like yourself, like No Time for Social, you know, I think one of the value adds that that you guys um, can probably bring to the table is there's only so many hours in a day that yeah. an internal um an internal marketing team can really devote to content creation and and pushing out and responding and stuff like that so you know by partnering with with no time for social um you know one of the one of the benefits it sounds like is hey you can really um be thinking out of the box as a mm -hmm. as a company um, yeah. and, and be that partner, um, along the journey to go ahead and, and, um, you know, really help develop some, some deeper insights as far as what's going on with, with, uh, customers so that yeah. you're not looking at it within, within the four walls, um, of, of your company. hundred percent. And I can give you two quick examples of, of where we've been able to be successful, um, with, with that type of setup. 
<clears throat> um, one of them is a global company called Tilcor Roofing. They're a global manufacturer of stone coated steel. Um, we've been running Facebook lead generation ads. We do all of their content, but the yeah. Facebook lead generation ads for them have generated 9,000 leads in the last three years for their company. It would be nearly impossible for even somebody in their company to build yeah. the systems that are needed in order to execute on those ads. So that would be one. Mm -hmm. The other would be a really cool client out of Ohio called Bo Jackson's Elite Sports. The only thing we do for Bo Jackson's Elite Sports out of, out of Ohio is run ads mm -hmm. for them. But that's, it's a perfect, it's a match made in heaven because they're on site so they can do Instagram and video and do all of that yeah. stuff, right? Have all that organic content being pushed out. But when it comes to the 14 switches that need to be clicked in order for them to run 10 different ads at one time, targeting four different sports, targeting older kids, targeting parents. Nobody's going to sit around and spend time doing that at Bo Jackson's. So they hire us. They've been a client for a couple of years now, and we're executing on them with ad plans, ads, hitting the right people, getting leads in. And it's really, really been just a great relationship with them. So those, I think, are awesome. two examples of how a company would just be like, you know what? I don't have the time and I don't want to learn it. And I need, I need this to work for me. And it can work for the right company with the right audience. And, and that's really where we try to come in and, and just assist as much as we can. Yeah, and, and Bo knows. Bo knows. Bo knows. He's not messing around. <laughs> and hey, we've gotten to the point of, the, uh, of this coffee talk there, Bill, um, where I call it the speed round. Woo! And you, you, you and I have known each other for, for a while. You know, it's all about the roofers, you know, <laughs> um, roofing, roofing. Um, so what, <laughs> so what fact about Bill would people be surprised to learn about you? I sort of alluded to it, but, um, I was in the air force and I am a, a you know, Air Force meteorologist or was an Air Force meteorologist. Mm -hmm. Sort of the fact that ties into that, and you know this very well, is that I'm an avid storm chaser. So I've been storm chasing for many years. Um, I'm still, I think, sort of part owner of a company called F5 Tornado Safaris, and we brought people out. Um, I don't do it anymore actively with them, but for many years, I would storm chase a week or two a year and people all over the world fly into Oklahoma City. And there's several companies that do this, that go out and bring people storm chasing. It's a vacation, just like you would go to Europe and tour Italy. Uh, so that's probably uh, the really cool fact that, uh, you know, I'm still out there chasing probably only once a year now, but I still, I yeah. still in my blood. Well, hey, you know, with, uh, with, with the weather we've had in, in the Austin area in the last couple of years, I mean, you don't have to go very far. No, no, uh, 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 half a mile south of our house and a quarter mile south of your house. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> they're, st they're still fixing stuff over there. Right. Um, so what is, what is Bill's ideal off-the-grid location? Um, for me, it's probably 20 acres in the mountains fishing. Just yes. get me off. That's truly off-the-grid where I've got some serenity, got either mountains or some trees around me, you know, yep. decent weather and, uh, you know, a nice house that's sort of log cabin-ish, but has amenities. <laughs> there you go. And fish. <laughs> and doing some fishing. Right. And that, that is awesome. So you and I are both Jayhawks. Um, yes. For those, those, those who do not know that about, uh, about Bill and I, um, we, we both went to school together at, at uh, University of Kansas, um, you know, Rock Chalk Jayhawk. So Ooh. I got to ask you this. Is KU going back to back this year in basketball? Man, I, I definitely think this year they have a pretty good chance of going back to back. Um, okay. Obviously, we're, we're not going to really see what kind of action we got out of the gate until, you know, all the teams start playing. But um you know, that last team was really good. We've got a couple of players coming back that I think are going to continue to, you know, dominate and, and do really well. Obviously, we lost a few to the NBA. So I the losing the two to the NBA and, and one overseas is, is yeah. tough. Right. So our three 
big guys or, or three main players that, that sort of help get us there are, are, are gone. But, um, you know, Kansas is well known for their backfilling and making it happen. So yes. uh, I'm going to continue wearing my championship shirt. I actually got a few for Billy Boy. So he's wearing his to school. First day of school, so he was already dialed in. <laughs> yeah. so, that is, that uh, is awesome. We need to make it happen. Two in a row would be phenomenal. That would be amazing. And, and you know, we may have a, a, a decent football team this year, too. I, I'm excited about football this year. I am, too. Um, you know. There's there's nothing better than the potential to beat Texas again. So, yes. um, and anytime that can happen, we're, we're, we're happy. <laughs> you know, it's... <laughs> This this is horrible because you and I both have a have a lot of friends who are Texas fans, but yes. you know, in, in the last in the last you know four years to lose twice to Kansas and at your home stadium, I mean that's got to be pretty embarrassing. I mean, <laughs> you know, just saying. <laughs> I know, I know. It's good times though. <laughs> exactly. Well, hey, Bill, thank you very much. If someone wants to learn more about about you or want to wants to uh, sure. hop on a conversation with you and learn more about no time for social and social media marketing in general, how should, yep. what's the best way for them to go ahead and get in contact with you? So quickest way is uh, email bill at no time for uh, Text me on my cell 512-497-5557. Um, go to the website, no time for social.com. We have a contact form on there. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm a, I, I'm a big proponent of LinkedIn, uh, spend a good amount of time on there making connections So, Um, but yeah, um, there's multiple ways to reach out to me and I'm excited to talk about social with really anybody. Um, usually give my time away for free for at least 15 or 30 minutes, but a little more in depth. We'll talk. Excellent. And you know, uh, you know, it, it's always good if we can break bread, uh, right? talk some social, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, excellent. Well, hey, Bill, thank you very much for being a guest today. And, um, you know, if you're if you like this content, um, you know, please go ahead and uh, click the like bucket, light, like a button on uh, YouTube. Um, follow follow us. Um, we'll be putting out more great content. And uh, if you want me to do a, a personal introduction with uh, with Bill at any point in time, just reach out to me directly. Thank you very much, Bill. Mark, I had a great time. This was phenomenal. Um, definitely uh, excited to be a part of it and uh, appreciate you inviting me on. Hey, my pleasure. You have a great rest of the, the day, the week, and we'll thanks. be uh, chatting again soon, my friend. Sounds great. All right. Thanks.